Hey folks, today we take a look at the Game by Games Workshop. This is a cooperative game. It's called Execution Force. I'm going to tell you all about it in just a second. Hey game loving friends, this is Peg Tech, and today I want to tell you about Execution Force. Now, this is a game that came out a few years ago. I got it as a gift, and it sat on my shelf for a long time because one thing about Games Workshop games like this is they have this barrier to entry. They actually have a couple of barriers to entry, and what I mean by that is, one, they're a little bit more expensive than your typical board game, and two, you have to assemble all the components. And if you're really on your game, you're painting all the components too. I have fully painted uh, everything in here. I've gone through a really long hiatus where I, I hadn't painted miniatures in a really long time. I used to paint miniatures quite a lot. I had almost every Warhammer 40k army there was, except for Chaos. I took a really, really long break from uh, painting and collecting Games Workshop stuff. And, and then I got this one year for Christmas. Or my birthday. I can't even remember which. It's been a while. And like I said, this sat around for a long, long time. Well, one day I decided I really wanted to just finish it up so I could actually play the game. Because a game like this basically comes with just a box full of sprues uh, that you have to assemble. So even if you don't want to paint the game, there is going to be some assembly required. So when I started painting this, I hadn't painted any real miniatures in, uh, I guess it had been several years. And this sort of kickstarted me into another project that I wanted to work on, which was Dreadfleet. Another Games Workshop product full of sprues that you have to assemble, uh, models that beg to be painted, and uh, a board game with a project attached. The nice thing is that once you do finish painting all the miniatures and getting everything assembled, it's not a difficult game to play. And you can play it alone. Although, I had a lot of fun playing with uh, family members as well. The way that bad guys move is uh, it's completely AI. Uh, there, it's a really simple and easy system to move them around. Uh, it's a little bit more involved th than the assassin's turn, but it's really not difficult and it's still pretty fun to play on your own. But after I played it a couple of times, I decided to talk Kerrigan into playing around with me as well. I think uh, you and I will play some board games. But honestly, the best thing about this game is you can play it with anyone. Kerrigan picked it up no problem. Holly picked it up no problem. I'm going to take this to work and play with some friends that are at best casual gamers. And uh, I think that they're going to like it too. The game's not without its faults though. For the price, it doesn't really come with a lot of stuff. I mean, the models are decently, decently good models. And if you play 40k, you can easily integrate the assassins into your army or the Chaos Space Marines into your army, or even the cultists, which really aren't bad. The other thing I noticed is that it's a little bit easy. Almost too easy for uh, really hardcore gamers. I don't think you're going to get a really, really significant challenge. There's probably some house rules and other things that you could integrate in here to make it even more challenging, but the ease of play really did help getting my more casual friends and uh, my wife and daughter, who don't play very complicated games, uh, into this, into the board, so we can share a good time. The thing with Games Workshop products is, the models are outstanding. Absolutely fascinating. The lore is also really good, but a lot of their games are just, they're just difficult. They're not the kind of things that you can get your wife or your daughter to just sit down and play with you and, and learn in a night and also have a good time. Hey, can uh, we play Execution Force tonight? Tonight? Yeah, tonight. Yeah, sure. I find that playing this game takes between 60 and 90 minutes depending on how familiar you are with the rules. Um, my first playthrough by myself took nearly two hours and then by the time I got all the way to Holly, uh, we were playing right through it and it seemed like it took about an hour and a half. Miniature-wise, there's kind of a wide variety. Uh, the Chaos Lord is definitely an excellent miniature. The Assassins themselves are pretty neat miniatures. Uh, I thought that the Cultist looked really cool and interesting. I thought the Chaos Space Marines were 
were pretty bad. Like, I don't, I don't, they were just way too simple. Chaos sort of lends itself to this sort of super ornate uh, decorative style, and I felt like they kind of wrote it in for the Chaos Space Marines, but I like the rest of the miniatures really well. I thought the cultists were neat just because they have this sort of urban, uh, dirty, almost steampunk looking vibe to them with the gas mask and stuff like that. The Chaos Lord is, of course, incredibly ornate. I painted him last and I dreaded getting to that final job, but I thought he came out really well and I'm happy to have him in my collection now. So if you like Games Workshop and you'd like to paint and assemble some cool miniatures, have a really easy game to play with some friends and family that aren't really rules heavy people, then this might be a great choice for you. Overall, in the span of all the games that I have, I've got to give it probably a six, only because I didn't find it was very challenging. Uh, having to paint and assemble these things really made it, getting this to the table a lot more difficult than I, I'd like to do. <clears throat> and the replayability is probably scaled way back compared to things with, with a few more options in them. That being said, I still really enjoyed the game. I'm glad to have it in my collection. I'll definitely be breaking it out to show some friends and play with them. And um, I think it's pretty cool. Like I was saying, another great thing about Games Workshop is they have so much lore built in that it's really easy to conceive a simple game like this. Your assassins are going to be moving through the space and uncovering these different rooms. Uh, when they finally uncover the control room and the teleporter, they'll teleport over to another area where the ritual is taking place, and then they'll have their final showdown against the Chaos Lord. And the whole time, as you're moving through the dark hallways, uncovering rooms, and discovering dark minions of chaos and defeating them, the timer's clicking down. The ritual has already begun, and if you don't finish in time, it means the end of a civilization. No pressure. Something else you might want to consider, this doesn't come with any sort of insert at all to protect the miniatures. I actually had some of these that were from some miniatures, unfortunately, I had to sell a long time ago. But I had these empty foam pieces, these pluck and pull pieces, and I've just sort of integrated that into the box to keep all of these safe. Several of these miniatures are very pointy. They've got little grabby, pointy bits, and some are real th small, thin, fragile parts. So. Uh, it is easy to break some of these if you're not careful with them or make a plan for uh, storing them after you finish assembling them. If you're the type of person that doesn't like the way dice make decisions in some of these games, uh, this might not be for you. It's like so many other Games Workshop games where you're rolling to hit or, or do different things. And even the way the, that the AI moves the bad guys around has a lot to do with dice rolls. When they get to a junction, you roll a dice to see which way they turn, and sometimes that works out for you, and sometimes it doesn't. Also, to mix up the game a little bit, there are these event cards. And uh, you read these at the beginning of the Chaos player's turn, or the Chaos turn, and uh, they sort of mix things up. Sometimes they add more Chaos characters, sometimes they give them a handicap, sometimes they give them a benefit. But again, it's sort of a random event uh, where things can go a little bit better for you or a little bit worse at the turn of a card. I don't mind the randomness, it sort of keeps things different. Uh, it makes sure that you know that even though you're in a, a great position, you're not gonna automatically win. Some people don't mind, some people really hate it. But for me personally, it's not a problem. So that's all I got for you this week. Until next time, play more games, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.